when we are adding and subtracting fractions, the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, that we want to make sure that we have is a common denominator. So you guys can see in this case, we do not have a common denominator, right? We have 5 and we have 8. So what we need to do is we need to determine what is the least common denominator. So the tip that I kind of brought up um, with students is you need to find the smallest number that 8 and 5 divide into. So you can always multiply 8 times 5, and that will always give you a common denominator. But that's not always going to be the least common denominator. All right. So what I like to do in my head when I'm doing this is I like to pick the larger of the two denominators and write out, and write out the multiples. Now, obviously, if I'm doing this in my head, I can probably think of the multiples in my head. But let's just kind of work it out. 8, does 5 divide into 8? Does 5 divide into 8? Not evenly, right? So therefore, that's not the least common denominator. And then 16, no, 5 doesn't divide into 16. 24, no, 32, no, 40. So guess what? 5 times 8 actually did um, give us the least common denominator. So 40 is our common denominator. So what I need to do is determine, all right, what multiplier do I need to multiply by 8 and 5 to get to 40? Well, it's going to be different for each fraction. So to get 5 to multiply by 40, I need to multiply by 8. But we don't want to change the problem. If you just multiply the denominator by a number, you're going to change the fraction. right? If you had like 1 half and you multiplied the denominator by 2, then you'd have 1 fourth, which is different. So what we have to do is multiply that number on the top and the bottom, which produces what we call equivalent fractions. Because if you multiply 1 half by 2 over 2, you get 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. Then over here, so you multiply here by 8 over 8. To get to 8 to 40, you have to multiply by 5 over 5. All right? When you multiply fractions, um, you just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Please do not cross multiply when you're multiplying fractions. All right, Cross multiplication has really nothing to do with the operation of, of the product for fractions. So I multiply across. So I have negative 32 over 40 minus 35 over 40. Now I have two fractions with common denominators. Now I can subtract them. So negative 32 minus 35 is going to be a negative 67 over 40. And then the last step would always be, can I reduce this? Can I divide out a number from the numerator and the denominator? And you look at it, you think, you think, you think. No. OK? So that would be your final answer. Any questions? Pray go with this. No. Okay. All right, you guys do not have to show that.